What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sound of Attack once again, and today we are going to be talking about the software components required for mining cryptocurrency. This could be anything from Ethereum to, of course, Ravencoin, and even some kind of crossovers to ASIC mining with Bitcoin and so on and so forth. And yes, I did that intentionally this time. But before we get into it, here's a word from our sponsor. The following is a paid advertisement. Hi guys, have you all heard about the co-vesting copy trading module? Guess what news I'm bringing you today. There has been a strategy which has changed the lives of 37 lucky followers who joined from the start. Here's a tweet made by official Prime Twitter account congratulating a strategy manager. There is a strategy called Satoshi Bets, managed by a gentleman right here who has showed excellent trading results, earning more than 1.5 million in just under three days. As you can see, he has achieved some really insane results and made a total return of over 1,800% for his followers and turned 400K into over 8 million, changing the lives of his followers along the way. Covesting is a buzzing as a result of this. Check it out for yourself by clicking the link to the Covesting Telegram channel in the description below. Once again, co-vesting is a great tool for both experienced traders and newbies alike. It involves significant risk, however. So do your own research and join the co-vesting community as they are a very friendly and supportive community. You can always use my promo code SONOFATECH to get a 50% welcome bonus on Prime. Please trade responsibly. Alrighty, so the other day I got a tweet and it said, what's better, Phoenix Miner, Simple Mining OS, or Ethermine. And here's the problem with that question. All three of those things are different components that facilitate mining. They are not individual things that can just by themselves mine cryptocurrency. Each one of them requires the other one to function. So we really need to get into defining what these software components are so you guys have a better idea of what you're doing when you're interacting with the software. Now. There is a caveat with basically what I would call applications that help run all of these components. And that would be something like NiceHash or of course EasyMiner and there are some other solutions as well. But for today, what we're gonna do is just clearly define what an operating system is and so on and so forth. But what I'll do here is pull this up and we're gonna start with simple mining. Now, the thing about simple mining is is it's not just an OS, right? So when you think of an operating system, you think of things like Windows, Linux, so on and so forth. What simple mining is, is just a specialized distribution of Ubuntu, which is Linux, that allows you to go ahead and mine and control rigs remotely through what is known as a web GUI or a a web user interface, right? So that is what simple mining is. That is what Hive OS is. That is what ethos is and minor stat to a certain extent depending on how you're installing it that's what minor stat does as well all of these operating systems are essentially just pre-packaged distributions of ubuntu that allow you to mine easily there's nothing special about them outside of that everything that you download or utilize as far as miners and so on would be the same on windows or linux now that gets us into miners because when we're talking about of course simple mining you can select different miners to go ahead and mine with and basically those miners are going to include things like phoenix miner here which i have pulled up lol miner which is in the guide for of course ethereum t-rex miner there's a lot of different ones. Now, miners are important because they are basically what is controlling the instructions to your GPU to mine the cryptocurrency. And every miner will support various different algorithms and you will need to basically validate that the coin you are mining is the same algorithm as the miner that you're trying to utilize. Most miners support Windows and Linux and you will be able to download them directly from their GitHub or a mega download site. So it really depends on the miner, but that's basically how it functions. And that is what you see when you see these little, basically command line windows that are displaying the hash rate and power and so on. Now, that doesn't mean that you can just run the miner without a pool. So what is a pool? 
and we'll use ethermine as an example here ethermine is a pool this is the web interface for the pool so you can interact with whatever your hash rate is being reported to the pool so on and so forth now in the pool a very rudimentary description of it would be basically a piece of software or a server that takes in all of the requests from a gpu for the work that needs to be done and pulls that work together hence the name pool and sends it out to the chain so that'll go out to the ethereum blockchain for example and request work and then it kind of disperses that work out among various different miners across the world and why would a pool do that well a pool primarily does this because the required amount of hash rate to solve a block is significantly higher than say a single GPU or even a single eight card mining rig would be able to handle on its own. So pools are there so that you can actually solve blocks and then the way that they function is depending on how much hash rate you have, you get what's known as shares. So think of it at a very simple term, we could say like there are a hundred shares and if your hash power is one percent of the hash power on the pool then you would get basically one share out of the hundred shares make it super simple there now if and then 50 percent, you would get 50 shares and so on and so forth it's a little bit more complicated than that but a very basic term that's kind of what's happening so that you guys are clear on that the important things that you need to learn is the miner is different than the pool, which is also different than the operating system, okay? Miners can run on multiple different operating systems and miners can mine to multiple different pools, just depending on how you want to set it up. So when you're trying to set up a mining rig, you basically need to be keeping this in mind. If we want to talk about NiceHash in particular, that's a good example of a software a suite, I suppose you would call it, because it is multiple things. You have the NiceHash application, and that will basically run through all the benchmarks and so on and manage which miners are going to be running. Behind NiceHash are multiple miners, things like Phoenix Miner, T-Rex Miner, LOL Miner, and so on, whatever they may be. And it downloads all of those and puts them obviously in the directory with NiceHash or whatever. And then it runs those independently. And NiceHash obviously runs on Windows for the operating system. But NiceHash also has its web interface as well as its own proxy setup for dispersing out work. And that is kind of a whole other set with their web interface that we would have to go over in a more detail in another video. If you're interested, let me know in the comment section below and I can do a bit more research as far as like how that all functions for y'all. So I hope this kind of clears it up. I did just notice though that these questions are getting asked a lot and to help you make more intelligent or ask more intelligent questions that could get you a little bit further in your mining journey. I just wanted to make sure that we clearly defined the difference between an operating system, a miner and a mining pool. And if you do still have some questions about that, feel free obviously to ask in the comment section below. Somebody may help you there. The best place is gonna be on Rocket Chat, which you can get access through through the membership program on YouTube or at Son of Attack on Twitter, which you can also get access to me over there, just depending on how much is going on because there's, there is a lot of uh, notifications going off on my phone and everything. Now, I also did want to address just at the end of this video that if you guys are not okay with any sort of sponsorship, this was the first sponsored video and you have thoughts or opinions about it or we find out that something is wrong, of course. I try to do the best research on it as I can up front and also I'm not a trader. So obviously going into sponsorships for exchanges and so on can be kind of a a very daunting and scary task, but Prime XPT was kind enough to reach out and sponsor this video. I did my research. They seem to at least be upfront about what they're doing, and I have seen some pretty good reviews, so we decided to go with it. If you guys use it, let me know how you like it. I'd be curious. The co-investing stuff is pretty interesting, and I will see you guys next Tuesday.